All right, let's get this party started, but not before I eat a quick snack because, girl, your girl's hungry. Long time no see, guys. I actually filmed another video before this talking about the transition from my retail job to an office job. And I haven't decided if I'm going to post that. I honestly haven't dabbled with editing it or looking at the footage yet, but it just wasn't something I was excited about. Fast forward to now, I just got home from work. I was scrolling on social media and I saw a meme about how colder weather means that cuffing season is amongst us. And then it occurred to me that I should talk about something to do with cuffing season. So basically what I'm saying is this video is brought to you by a meme. I think it's so much easier to film and to make content for you guys when I feel really excited about it and when an idea just comes to my head and I'm like, oh, I have something to say about it because you know this girl has something to say about everything. So today's video is going to have to do kind of with relationships. It's more so about mindset and things to expect and different ways to look at that transition from the honeymoon phase of being really excited and like really in love in a relationship to kind of transitioning out of it and starting what we would call your real relationship. If you're anything like me, there's like this negative feeling of like, oh no, the honeymoon phase is over. This is where like the bullshit starts and it gets hard and it gets annoying and you're fighting and all this stuff. But the more I think about it, the more I'm kind of appreciating the fact that the honeymoon phase ends. And I really just wanna jump on here and talk about my thoughts and my random epiphanies that I had about it. So that maybe if you are taking part in this cuffing season, you will feel a lot better when that inevitable honeymoon phase comes to an end. Let's talk about it, shall we? If you watched my last video, assuming that my last video is still going to be my last video, what? One of my previous videos, I talked about what I had been up to in the last few months and how my life had taken an upward swing and things were just going so well. And one of those reasons was because I started a relationship with my current boyfriend. I've been seeing him for around, I think four months, but officially dating for around two. Um, I don't really care about official and unofficial. I'd say I've been seeing him for a few months, okay? And what I've experienced with him is that we had a very, very strong, very lovely honeymoon phase, very cute. He was surprising me all the time, did all these things, love it. Hope he's not watching this, but if he is, I'm basically about to tell them a whole love story, babe. Just kidding, I'm not gonna tell you everything, but I will keep referring to my situation as an example, just to help guide what I'm trying to say. We have gotten into to the real nitty gritty, a little bit more complex, a little bit more deep. And that's what I'm gonna be talking about now, action. So first things first, let's talk about the obvious, the cute things. When you first start a relationship, everything's all nice and warm and fuzzy, pulling on your heartstrings, giving you all the feels. You're the most wonderful person on this planet. You are a star. You're like, I know, thank you, baby. My boyfriend was really good at surprising me, planning these really cute dates, being the most thoughtful person ever, remembering everything I said. He literally got me a cinnamon bun this one time when I had mentioned that I like cinnamon buns once. And I know that sounds underwhelming, but if you ladies, are after dudes out there you know how hard it is to find a dude that listens to you okay that's not the point why did you let me ramble like that basically i got really caught up in me just being like hey these things are so nice he's so cute he's so lovely but when is it going to end i was like whoa this stuff is really really nice and this is how movies are and i just feel so lovely and when is the real shit coming because i'm on to your tricks and i will say that like a lot of things did kind of dwindle away like you can't keep planning extravagant dates forever but what i will say is this is that it is an active effort that you just have to keep putting work into to make last now what i mean by that is not that you have to maintain this level of romance and excitement and all that stuff but i think there are two pieces that you can carry on throughout your entire relationship past the honeymoon phase the first thing are those things that remain tradition between you guys in your relationship what are the things that you will do every single time xyz happens what are the things that you do every day every night what are the routines that you are building for yourself to show each other that you care that are special and specific to your relationship. For example, me and my boyfriend, every time we hang out or we go on a date, we will send each other a list of fake feedback after. And it's usually like cuter or funnier or wittier things that are like, this happened today and I felt this way about it, whatever. And it's fake feedback because I'm not gonna be like, you fucking suck, boy. But we will do that religiously. Sometimes we'll skip out on it. But for the most part, that has been something that we've carried on into our real relationship past the honeymoon phase. Then on the opposite side, you have the things that you want to carry on to be your relationship routine forever. And then there's things that you transition to be more infrequent, things that happen on special occasions, those really cute surprises, those really extravagant dates, those super fun things 
that you do together happen less frequently but still happen. I think the red flag comes when the honeymoon phase ends and everything stops like all the cute things stop. The only thing that you're getting is a good night and a good morning and a maybe I love you, you know what I'm saying? But if you put in the work, you can maintain all these really easy small things and just continuously be mindful to add those into your relationship to keep things really fun and exciting and fuzzy. And then you can use the rest for special occasions. So that's a good way to transition activities that you would do right off the bat all the time to a more sustainable way to fulfill those throughout your relationship moving forward. Next thing I wanna talk about is fighting okay because trust me if you're in a relationship where both people care about each other oh it will happen okay if you're not fighting you're either perfect human beings that think exactly the same and always know what's up or you don't like each other at all that's all I have to say about that. So for the most part, speaking from my experience, fighting does come from a place of care. You feel a certain way about this person. You want them to know what you're thinking at all times. And when they don't, it's disappointing. I have a couple videos about conflicts within relationships that I'll leave up here or link down there, whatever you wanna do. But here I just wanna talk about kind of how you can view fighting in a different way. Because I know, especially for me, when we started fighting, I was like, man, I knew the other shoe was gonna drop, okay? I called it. And I know when the fighting's happening it's like the shittiest thing in the world like i'm not going to sit here and be like fighting's the best yay fighting yeah no okay that shit sucks but i can look back and think about the fights that me and my boyfriend have had and at the end of the day every time we've had conflict i can confidently say that i've learned more about him i know how to speak to him in specific ways i know how to calm him down if he's upset with me every time we fight i'm learning more and more about him and what you'll probably find when coming out of the honeymoon phase is that you go through this rapid month or two months or however long of learning so many things about this person you are catching up on their life their favorite food their favorite color their shoe size all those things but eventually you get to a point where you know most of the surface level details and when it gets to the point where you've learned all those things I challenge you to think about the fact that every time you fight that is when you're learning even more about them and that does not mean that you should go out there and start a billion fights with your significant other but I think that there is something in fighting and in conflict that should be appreciated if it's resolved well and if it's handled well in the sense that it does offer you this new deeper information about the person that you're choosing to share a life with and if you can look at it that way and kind of take that positive thinking away when you have conflict it a settles the mind a lot and b makes you appreciate that person a lot more because you're like okay hey, i know that was unfortunate and that was uncomfortable for everybody but you know more about me and i know more about you and that's what i'm working towards in this relationship so as shady as fighting is there is some good to it and there are some things that do come out of it that strengthen your relationship assuming it's handled decently well. Also side note, this could just be a me thing, but if a fight, if a piece of conflict is handled pretty well after and you feel that sense of like, okay, we did it, we handled it, good job babe, we're killing it, fist bump, that moment right after you resolve a fight almost feels like a new honeymoon phase, am I right? Because you're like, damn, I feel closer to you, I feel like we handled that, we got through it, we're stronger as one, I don't think you're gonna dump me, I ain't gonna dump you, like this is like a newfound security security blanket I know more about you mm. think of it that way instead of being like damn it was so annoying that we fought because trust me I think that sometimes okay and then the last thing I want to say about the transition is that it kind of touches base on what I said before about learning more about the person but think about the honeymoon phase as you learning a breadth of details about them and trying to cover all of your bases in kind of like a horizontal way that doesn't make sense breadth is what I'm saying okay so you're trying to learn all the different things about this person you are soaking up a lot of information and then past the honeymoon phase you start working on depth you know all the surface level things you know a bunch of different facets a bunch of different areas of their life but now you're working on getting under that layer and going into the deep dark shit and while it might not always be pretty and not always easy to access once you get to the depth that is where a real relationship builds real progress builds real love builds real commitment loyalty 
loyalty, all of those things build when you start going under the surface. So I encourage you to embrace that transition from the honeymoon phase to the real phase because that is where it all starts and what you will truly cherish and appreciate moving forward because that's what's going to set you up for long-term success. That's pretty much all I wanted to jump on here and say. Like I just came home, turned on the camera and was like, this is what I have to say about honeymoon phases. So if it didn't make sense, I'm sorry I didn't plan this video out. I don't have my laptop in front of me this time. It's right here. I don't know what I'm doing. It's a mess. Thanks for joining me. This was fun. I missed talking to my phone slash you guys. If you have any suggestions or if you have any other thoughts, please leave a comment if you want. Like this video if you want. Subscribe to my channel if you want. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!